I am a tell virgin. First time I've ever been here. So if this thing starts going long, just raise your hand and that'll be my cue to get the hell off. Because this story could go long. You know why? Because it's not touching. <laughs> you are not going to learn any lessons from this story at all. <laughs> this story could be long because it contains a lot of the vices that I hold dear in my life. Yeah. Things like gambling and drinking and football and sex. They're all in the same story. Entitled the 85 Bears. Let's take you back in time, ladies and gentlemen, back to 1985, if you will. Some of you are way too young to understand what life was like back in 85. How many folks were teenagers or older in 85? Let me get a show of hands, so less than half. The rest of you have no idea the hell we lived with in 1985. And You'll hear a little bit about it as this story heads out, but let's start by talking about my first love, her name, the beautiful redhead, Caroline. Munson and I, we were going out in high school back in 1985 in a small town in South Dakota, and Carol had flaming red hair, not the tinted kind you can get in a shop. She was born with flaming red hair and those kind of freckles that go along with it. I loved her to death, and she loved me, and we were... Red-blooded American teenagers back in 1985, 17 years old, going on manhood, if you get my drift, okay? <laughs> Caroline and I, we were an item in high school. We would go to all the dances. We would sit on the bus together and hold hands. And every Friday or Saturday night, you could catch us at the drive-in theater in the back seat, doing what kids do in 1985, watching a really crappy movie on a speaker that hung out the window at the drive-in. That's what we would be doing, heating up the windows. But we never really did that thing that you're supposed to be doing until Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. 1986. We were going to be watching the 1985 uh, Bears. You guys remember the Bears, William Refrigerator Perry, all those guys won all the games, the greatest football team ever. Anyway, Caroline and I had a pact that at Tim Hill's Super Bowl party, we would break away at halftime because his parents were not home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if there was anything that you would call a sure thing, it was going to be halftime at the Super Bowl. <laughs> Caroline Munson and me. Probably in Tim Hill's parents' bedroom. We weren't sure about the logistics. We just knew that was the time. And I can tell you, I have never anticipated a goddamn football game more <laughs> than Super Bowl 20. Uh, a little background. It was 1985. We didn't have the internet back then, so... We weren't sure who was actually going to win the game. All we had were three channels. And depending on who you listened to, they would say this team would win or that team would win. But you didn't have stats on your phone. You didn't have a lot of access to which team was better. You simply had the voices of people around you, the people you knew. So I thought to myself, I'm going to double up on this Super Bowl. Not only is there a sure thing at halftime with the beautiful red-headed Caroline Munson. I'm going to wager the hell out of this game, and I'm going to win some money today from my best friends because I had a secret weapon that they did not have. The secret weapon lived 30 miles away in a town called New Effington, South Dakota, a little man by the name of, well, I'll just call him Danny E. Danny E. had access to something called the Sporting News. Anybody remember the Sporting News? Any of you old folks? The Sporting News was a newspaper that would come out, and it had all the stats that you couldn't get anywhere else. If you wanted to know anything about sports, you didn't read the sports section in the forum. You didn't go to the news. You found somebody who had a subscription to the Sporting News, 38 pages every week with every stat you'd ever want. And I went to Danny's house, unbeknownst to my friends who I would be stealing money from in these wagers. <laughs> and I said, tell me all the stats of the New England Patriots of the AFC and the beautiful, daunting Chicago Bears of the NFC. And Danny, that twisted moron, fed me every New England Patriot stat he could to convince me that there was no possible way that New England Patriots could lose. They were going to destroy the Bears in any statistical category, and I bought it hook, line, and sinker. 
but that wasn't enough for me. No, I needed more proof. So I went to my friend's house. His name was Jeff. We didn't have computer gaming back then in the 80s. If you wanted to play uh, some sort of simulated football, you had to buy a board game. <laughs> and my friend Jeff had a board game called Apaba. Really brilliant name. The marketing in the 80s kind of sucked. APBA, Apaba Football. And you could buy the teams and you would lay out your lineups and you would pick the plays and you would shake dice and you would find out if that quarterback threw that pass. And a game simulation would take somewhere around eight to 10 hours. <laughs> so my buddy Jeff and I sat in his basement for four consecutive days and we played as many possible <laughs> simulated games as we could between the New England Patriots and the vaunted Chicago Bears. And it's New England Patriots, under my tutelage, won seven out of ten of those bad boys. So, of course, I wagered heavy with every friend I could find, and I put every little nickel I could on the New England Patriots to just beat the crap out of the Bears. And all of these poor morons were going to be at Tim Hill's Super Bowl party. And I was going to rake in the cash, of course, after halftime at the beautiful Caroline Munson and I. <laughs> a sure thing. I had a sure thing on the wager. I had a sure thing upstairs. It was going to be a great day for the old Matt G. But <laughs> didn't work out that way necessarily. This is how the day went. Showed up at Tim Hill's to help him set up. He's a good friend of mine. I was helping him set up for the big party. Plus, I didn't want to drive to Caroline's place to pick her up because her dad was former military mean, scary dude, and I didn't want to be seen picking up his daughter to go to the thing, so I was going to meet her at Tim Hill's place, and so I was helping clean up, and people were coming, and we were setting out the snacks, and we were setting out the pops, and whatever we were going to have, and uh, the door rang, and there she was, and she was gorgeous, people, tall, red hair, because it's the 80s, tall, <laughs> hair sprayed hair, the little smock hanging, hanging off the shoulder. This is going to be a great day. So we sat on the couch, Caroline and I, grabbed a bag of Doritos because that was the snack of the day back in the 80s. We didn't have good snacks like we have now. We had Doritos, and we only had two kinds. We had taco, and we had nacho cheese because it was the damn 80s, and that's all we had. We didn't have your stupid purple bag and your green bag and your yellow bag. Damn kids nowadays. We had two. We had nacho cheese. We had taco. So I ripped open the bag, and I pulled out that first Dorito. I popped it in my mouth, and oh, my God, it just tasted better because I knew I had a sure thing on this wager. And I had Caroline Munson by my side. That first bite of Dorito, best bite ever. A sure fire snack thing if I've ever had one. And then the game started, and Caroline sitting next to me, snuggled up close. And, uh, well, the Bears scored. Well, that sucks, but that's okay. She's kind of looking up closer, and I'm you know, paying a little attention to her. And then my friends start giving me a little hard time because yeah, I'm behind. Oh, whatever. It's early. Then the Bears score again and again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> I'm just getting more and more angry and angry and angry and angry. Caroline keeps trying to just bugging me. She's, like, trying to snuggle up next to me, and I'm just watching this game, and I'm just pissed. I'm so angry. And my friends are giving me crap because I'm going to owe them all money at the end of this thing. And I'm just, I'm snapping at them, and I'm snapping at her, and I'm snapping at anybody who's watching the game. And the announcers, I'm yelling at the damn announcers, and this game just sucks. And I'm pissed. Somebody stepped, stepped on my Doritos. It's just a horrible, horrible thing. So halftime shows up, and of course I'm thinking, well, at least I've got that. And I look over at beautiful Caroline Munson, who's now sitting with my best friend Mike on the other couch <laughs> over there. Apparently, he's been paying much more attention to her than I have. So I kind of snuggle on over to her, and she looks at me like she didn't know who the hell I was. She wanted nothing to do with me. And eventually, she drove herself home, if you get my meaning. And then the game ends, and I have to pay off all of these wagers. So I just wanted to tell everyone here that no matter what you've planned, no matter what you think is going to happen, no matter how well you believe you've lined up all the dominoes, the only sure thing in this world is that first bite of a Dorito is really, really good. <laughs> Thanks.